React Native Developers. This delightful UI style is named Glass Morphism. This is done using a backdrop blur and the underlying technique can be used creatively to build all sorts of great user experiences. I'm William, recording from beautiful Zurich, Switzerland, and in this video, I would like to show you two things. First, how we can use backdrop blurs from React Native Skia to implement glass morphism UIs. And we're gonna look at the Calmaria app as suggested by Rafael Almeida on Twitter. And then I want to show you how the underlying technique of using backdrop filters can be used with other filters than a blur and we can use it to build all sorts of fun uh, user experiences. Before we jump into it, I must say that I'm uh, quite excited because as React Native developers, we used to be completely excluded from all design trends, whether it's glass morphism, neuromorphism, uh, Aurora backgrounds, you name it. And now, thanks to React Native Skia, we can start to have some serious discussions when a new design trend emerge on how we can leverage it in our React Native apps. We are into VS Code here, and I have my little circle with a gradient, which animes nicely, like in the Calmeria app. And you might know already that we can apply filters to, to such a circle. So for instance, we can actually blur the circle. So I can add maybe sigma x 20, sigma y 20. So now it's nicely blurred, but of course that's not what we want to do because here we are blurring everything. We want to create a clipping area and only blur whatever is behind this uh, clipping area. And so this is where the background blur, backdrop blur, sorry, comes in. So we're gonna use the backdrop blur. And I think there is a property named intensity, so we can set 20 again. Let me reload here. And so here we have the same result, but of course, one interesting thing here is that we're not blurring the circle anymore, we are blurring whatever is behind this clipping area. And we can restrict it to be half of the screen. And I have already here a rectangle that defines half, the bottom half of the screen. So we can use it here to clip. And now it looks like on the um, Calmeria app. So the interesting thing about these backdrop filters is that we are not applying the filter directly, but we are defining a clipping area and we are blurring, applying the filter to whatever is behind this clipping area. Let me show you another example. So we're gonna switch to the card example. So I have a card here which is, I guess, translucent, transparent, sorry, and um, maybe quickly, let me add some background to it. So we're gonna create a rectangle. So it's gonna be some sort of a white with some opacity. And so X zero, Y zero, width is card width. And height is card height. Looking good. <coughs> so that looks good. I can even add some opacity. So I don't know, zero three maybe. So it's nicely uh, transparent. And maybe one thing I want to do is to, so here you see I have the group, which I use to translate the card around. And maybe I want to clip it with a rounded rectangle to have like some nice rounded edges. And so here I already defined uh, my rounded rectangle. So the parameters, right, the first parameter is the rectangle and then the radius X, radius Y. So here I have the card rectangle, card rectangle with 20 points of um, corner radius. So I can apply it to the group. So now it's nicely uh, rounded. 
and now I can, so these backdrop filters are a superset of a group. So I can simply replace the group by backdrop blur. And indeed, I'm gonna need to add some some intensity, so maybe 20 again. And so now if I move the card around, you see that uh, the background is nicely blurred. Maybe I can remove, where is, the, so the white rectangle, can I even like just remove it completely? So that's a bit too strong, but maybe, let me put only 10% opacity. So something, something like this. So you see it blurs nicely and I, so again, to show you that we're blurring whatever is behind, here if I move the card around, it works nicely. So really uh, fun types of uh, user experiences. Now what I would like to show you is that this is not specific to the blur filter. We can apply any kind of filter. So if I go back to the first example, this backdrop blur is actually a, a shortcut for a backdrop filter. And the first child of a backdrop filter is the filter you want to apply. And so we know that here we want to apply a blur. So essentially here I'm rewriting the same, exactly the same thing, same behavior. And in fact, it looks identical. But now the cool thing is that we can apply any kinds of filter. And I can show you a, a very simple one is a, we can apply a color matrix. And in fact, so it's a, we can apply a matrix operation to a color to modify it. And I have some, um, so if we look here, color matrices. So I found this, uh, great, great website here to play with, uh, that give, generates uh, SVG color matrices. So we can have black and white, sepia, and so you can copy paste it directly to get the matrix. I log here the matrix value, so you can also copy paste it directly as uh, an array of uh, numbers. So here I have like three, three color matrices. We can just like play with it. So I can add sepia here, maybe black and white. Yeah. So, okay, maybe let's try now something not very useful. <clears throat> I mean, in this particular uh, use case. So let's try a more advanced filter. And if you have been looking into the Skia documentation, so we have a, a chapter on, on shaders and we show these, uh, these fun gradient, so radial gradient, linear gradient, sweep gradient, and of course they can be animated, and, and these are fun, and I think these, these uh, gradients, they hopefully really spoke to you on how you can use them. And then we have a, a chapter on Perlin noise shaders where we showed these, uh, these two shaders. And some of you, I mean, some of you might know how they, they can be used and you might have used them in also other contexts than, than app development, maybe using After Effects or uh, Unity or, yeah. But maybe some of you were thinking, okay, what are uh, these useful for? Uh, well, I'm gonna show you one example, a fun example of how you can use these, uh, these shaders. So we're gonna use these shaders into, the, into a filter. So here I'm gonna use, I'm gonna, let me just copy paste the shader here. <clears throat> so here nothing really uh, interesting happens, we just um, are showing the same exactly that you see here, except, I mean it's the same, it's transparent, right? So the white here is, is transparent. We are gonna use this noise into the a displacement map. And so a displacement map is gonna look at a color value. So for one pixel, and there is an algorithm to decide how it should modify the input pixel based on the color value. So 
we're going to use a displacement map here. And we need three parameters, right? Which color channel are we looking at for the X value? So the X displacement, the Y displacement, and there is a scale parameter, we, scale parameter which we can use also to uh, make the effect uh, bigger or smaller. So channel X, and I think here because I use uh, Perlin noise, and so the noise on the color seems to be fairly e equal. So I think here it doesn't matter which channel I, I can pick. Maybe the alpha, alpha channel actually looks strong. So actually maybe since I want the effect to be strong on the Y axis, I think, on the X axis, sorry, I might use alpha actually. But I don't think it matters so much, but I, I'm gonna use alpha for the X channel. And channel Y really doesn't matter. I think I can pick R. In scale, usually people put 50, but here we can. Um, so now this looks uh, interesting, kind of. But uh, I wanted to have like a reflection effect as if, you know, we were looking at the sun um, above the sea. And so I want really the effect to, to be stronger on the Y, on the X axis, sorry. So I'm gonna increase the frequency here. Yes, much better. So this is pretty close to what I wanted to, to achieve. And there is another, um, I don't know, actually I'm not sure why it looks like it's uh, a bit too much on the right side, but uh, we can fix it with another filter which is called offset, which again you might be familiar with from um, React Native, uh, from a, a SVG, and so maybe on the X, I want to do minus five, like some slight, so let me import offset. Oh, and I need to get set Y zero. Yes, so <laughs> this is pretty close to to what I wanted to, to achieve. And uh, we can share, I mean, these can be are infinitely composable, that's the beauty of uh, of React. I mean, React allows us, these are compo infinitely composable from Skia, but React uh, enables us to, to, to use this composition very easily, even before we were using a, a color filter, but the renderer really understood, or the shader, but the color, the renderer understands how to compose these things uh, automatically, which is super nice. Um, and it also understands if these filters need to be executed only once or need to be part of the rendering loop. But uh, let me put a blur. Again, so sigma x20. And maybe, actually maybe you want to make it smaller so the effect is a bit more visible. Huh, it's not so, yeah, I mean, I guess you guys will be more creative than me to, to, to find fun example. So here I found this website about SVG filters here that I find to be pretty neat. So you see uh, tons of examples of uh, SVG filters and things that can be done. So you see again using this Perlin noise. And we support, most, most, we support a lot of these filters already. Uh, eventually, we, so Skia supports all of them, so eventually we will expose all of them through um, React Native Skia. And of course, if you, you see one filter which is not supported yet and you file an issue, I think we, we are going to be very happy to, to implement it for you. If you know if there is like a, a appealing use case for it. So I can definitely recommend to, to check out this, uh, this website. It can do some, some fun effect. And Maybe one last thing I want to show you before uh, uh, finishing this video is that, so as a clipping mask, we here we are using a rectangle. We used a uh, round rectangle before. But since this is a superset of a group, you guys probably know already that we can use also a path to clip. And uh, I think I have a small example. Uh, not a very useful example, but just... Uh, so to showcase here, so if I go in filter, the clipping is a 
SVG path. So <coughs> don't ask me why someone would want to do this, but here I, my filter is a color matrix. And <coughs> we use we use it to with a instead of clipping with a rectangle, we use a SVG path. So this you might find this useful somehow. So you can use black and white filter or all the filters that um, we just uh, looked at, right? The, even the dis displacement map, you name it. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this example. Finally, with React Native Skia, we can leverage many design trends in our React Native apps. We've been looking at glass morphism using backdrop blurs, and we have looked on how to use different kinds of filters and a blur to implement some other fun type of user experiences, so beyond uh, glass morphism. But I am also excited for us to explore other types of designed trends. So I am looking forward to talk to you soon. And until next time, happy hacking. <laughs>